Waymo is the autonomous vehicle development wing of Google parent company Alphabet Inc. Now, it started life as Google's self-driving division before being spun off in 2016, presumably because the much better name Google Drive had already been taken. Today, Waymo is testing and developing autonomous cars in six states with hundreds of vehicles, ranging from human-operated data collection vehicles on the East Coast to autonomous heavy trucks in Arizona and Texas. And there are also the autonomous taxis in Arizona and California that you may see if you live in the Phoenix or San Francisco areas. Now, in 2020, Waymo opened its Waymo One taxi service to the public in Phoenix, and last year expanded the autonomous rideshare to San Francisco, which brings us to today. Today we're here at Waymo's San Francisco Depot to take a look at and get a spin in one of their autonomous taxis behind me based on the Jaguar I-PACE EV. Now this is the depot where all of the vehicles in the San Francisco Bay Area are serviced and deployed from. Here is also where they load up the autonomous specialist to ride in the front seat as a safety driver at the beginning of every day. The process is actually simple. You go online and you sign up as a trusted tester and then you download the Waymo app. And once you're approved, you use that app like you would any other ride sharing app from Uber or Lyft. You just pull it out, tell it where you wanna go, that car comes up, picks you up. Let's give it a try. Now Waymo One taxis in San Francisco operate with a human in the driver's seat, Waymo's autonomous specialist, but they're only there to monitor the trip as a legal requirement and in the rare case of an emergency. All of the accelerating, steering, stopping, and decision-making is handled by the vehicle's AI. Uh, from where I'm sitting, this looks a lot like a regular Jaguar I-PACE that I would be driving uh, for review purposes. Just um, pretty basic looking, uh, well, very sci-fi looking as the I-PACE already kind of looks, uh, but with the extra addition of a screen back here for the passenger compartment uh, that's not necessarily there on the previous I-PACE. So we've got it looks like some type c ports so if i wanted to charge my phone i can do that but we've also got a lot of information about what's happening with the ride so this screen is where i would initiate the trip once i get into the vehicle i would just tap the start trip button and the vehicle will begin to drive autonomously with our autonomous specialist in the front making sure that everything goes safely uh, here is also where i've got some information about uh, sort of a 3d 360 view of the world uh, so I can see other cars going by, I can see things like buildings on this map, I can see what lane we're in and where the next turn's going to be, so that gives me a little bit of peace of mind uh, that I'm going to the right place and that the car knows what's happening in the world around it. There's a button here for pull over, um, so if I do maybe get a little car sick uh, and I just need to pull the car over and get out for whatever reason, there's a button for that. And uh, a call support button, heaven forbid uh, you need to use that, but it's there. But for the most part, you just hail the vehicle. You get in the vehicle, you hit start ride, and then you just sit back here and end up where you're going in approximately three minutes. So that was just an interesting exchange there uh, that, that just happened. Um, we came to a four-way stop. Um, vehicle on the right had right of way, but two cyclists went through the turn in the way that cyclists in San Francisco often do, where they kind of sometimes are acting like pedestrians and sometimes acting like cyclists. And, uh, you know, the car kind of had that moment where they kind of wanted to go, but the cyclists were in front of him and, you know, whatever. But the, the vehicle waited and waited and waited and took its proper turn in the getting through the intersection. It did not get confused by that. And I think that some human beings I know would have been confused by that situation, kind of jockeying for their opportunity to go. So we're back from the ride and as much of a backhanded compliment as it sounds, the best thing I can say about it was how unremarkable it was. It was smooth and easy, just like there were a human driver up front, which there was, they just weren't touching the steering wheel. Anyway, it was a really good and smooth process, which for a self-driving car, I think is the highest compliment that you can pay it. So there you go. There's been your look at the Waymo Depot, a ride in the vehicle and how the whole process works. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Are self-driving taxis the thing that you're looking forward to? Let us know down there and be sure to subscribe to The Roadshow so you don't miss any more of our coverage of autonomous, electric and other vehicles.